Hello everyone, this is Dr. A with a Chemistry Basics video. We're going to look at the cardiac markers. So the first cardiac assay we'll look at is creatine kinase um, CKMB. The normal range is less than 12 international units per liter or uh, less than 3-6% of the total CK if you have that value. Um, the, it is the most specific enzyme for myocardial tissue and has been used in the diagnosis of uh, an acute MI or a heart attack. However, it is not the um, most used test. The most used test we're going to talk about is a troponin, although it is still part of the cardiac workup at a lot of different facilities. And... Um, Part of its utility is that the serum CKMB concentrations will begin to rise 3 to 12 hours after the onset of the symptoms of a heart attack. They will peak at 24 hours and then return to baseline in 2 to 3 days. So it has a sharp rise and drop. Um, and so you'll see it actually rises slightly sooner than the troponin. So this could um, take up before the troponin is detectable. And it also returns to baseline much faster than the troponin. And so it could be useful in detecting a second heart attack, um, possibly if it happened, you know, maybe within a week of the first heart attack. And so there are there is some value for this older test that the CKMB is. The next one is the myoglobin, um, kind of like the CKMB. It's an older test. Um, it is um, sometimes part of a cardiac workup in certain facilities. Some facilities don't do it anymore. It, uh, the normal range does vary depending on the assay, um, the type of analyzer, facility, etc. It is uh, highly sensitive to myocardial ischemia, meaning lack of blood flow to the heart, again, usually implying a heart attack. Uh, it is most useful in ruling, I, ruling out an acute MI. The reason is, so myoglobin is a protein that's contained in muscle, skeletal muscle, and heart muscle. And so anything that damages the muscle will cause myoglobin release into the blood. And um, where it is useful in the context of a cardiac assay is that if that myoglobin stays normal, or if you will, like negative, like it's, it's in normal range, there's no increases, no rises, then you can... Um, pretty confidently say that there is no muscle damage, as in there is not even heart muscle damage. And so that is why it's useful in ruling out an acute MI. It also rises pretty quickly too, and rises sooner than a troponin. So the last one in the most common and most used cardiac assay is a troponin. So um, the normal range for the troponin is less than 0.1 nanograms per mil. It is highly specific and highly sensitive for a myocardial infarction, uh, meaning that any elevation in these cardiac troponins um, would indicate that there is a, there, it's being released from the heart muscle. There is something going on. It is most beneficial in identifying an acute MI or a heart attack six or more hours after the symptom onset. So again, it rises later than the other two we looked at, but if it ticks up, then you need to pay attention. The other thing with the troponin is that if a patient has had a heart attack, you will see, uh, so it, it, when it comes in, it might be negative, but you'll see an increase and then a, a sharp rise, and it's gonna take um, probably about up to two weeks to get back down to normal. So, um, Patients that come in and have a normal uh, troponin at presentation in the ER with signs and symptoms of a heart attack should be reassessed at least 6 to 12 hours after the onset of the symptoms, or if the suspicion is really high that they um, are having a heart attack, you know, may, may be based on uh, the EKG readings. Um, a lot of um, ER physicians will do, can, will, like check levels again in an hour or two after presentation is very common to do it every couple hours or even uh, some of them will do maybe every four hours. Protocols vary from one place to another, but the idea is to check on it uh, in that six to 12 hour window after the onset of the chest pains to detect 
uh, any increases. And so if it stays um, negative, if it stays um, you know, below 0 0.1 nanograms per mil uh, in that entire window, then you can pretty confidently say that there's not been any kind of heart damage, that there's not a heart attack. Um, and so, but if, if there was a heart attack, you, you would see this sharp elevation and then it will stay up for up to two weeks. Um, I mean, it'll, it'll come back down, but it'll, it'll stay detectable for up to two weeks after a heart attack. All right, and that wraps up our cardiac assays.